Hello everybody, uh, welcome to this special edition of the Monday Night Panel. Um, I'm Pete and I'm the chair of the Supporters Club. Uh, Hannah and uh, Chris are busy tonight, it's actually Chris's birthday, so happy birthday Chris. Um, so I'll be covering uh, for, for them tonight. Okay, so let's bring uh, Vic on first. Pete, a very good Vic. evening to you. How are you? How are you doing? All right. It's very, very hot, but okay. Yes. We're getting through. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, it's, it's a good day, right? It's a good day. Yeah, it is. Yeah, an extraordinary day. Yes. Now, so, um, I, 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 I was going to ask you a question, actually, um, because lots of things are happening in the last few hours. Uh, one of them is that the club's already been in touch with you about feedback, which is an extraordinary thing, bearing in mind, well, what's happened in the last 12 months. But what's happened? <laughs> Oh, uh, well, yeah, they got in touch this afternoon um, just to ask us to summarise the feedback that we got. If you remember in, I think it was March, both us and the Trust put out um, a questionnaire to our members to say, well, how would they like the club to deal with season tickets from last year? Uh, so they've written or they've contacted us already and I've spoken to them to give them a summary of, of the feedback. And if you remember, the feedback was... Um, uh, very complex. There was, there's no one size fits all. So some people wanted a full refund. Some people needed a full refund. Uh, I think that's you know that's important to say as well. Um, some people wanted partial refund. So there, there was quite a quite a mix. Um, also, not to forget, there are actually car parking season tickets as well. Where I don't know if we've got one of those, uh, so we reminded them of that as well. But I think it's really great on day one that they're already reaching out to us. So yeah, uh, so we'll absolutely. See, yeah, see and we'd, see, we'd see, see like your views tonight on that as well. If you've got anything you want to mention about uh, season ticket refunds, uh, then please pass on your thoughts, and then Pete can pass them on to the football club, which is uh, yeah. co a thing called communication. Yeah. Weird though that is, a strange. Yeah, it's great, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And I'm, I'm, I know that uh, that Danny watches these as well, so um, so it's, it's a great way to to give to you know if you've got anything particular. Um, suggestions that you know, I, da I know Danny watches these, and we can we can feed that back to him as well. But I think it's a really great day one. They're they're already in contact, so sure, good vibes, yeah. good vibes. Yeah. Okay, so let's bring on our our panelists tonight. Uh, we've got uh, first of all, we've got um, Anna. Um, hi, Anna. Hiya. Um, we've also got James from the Trust, who's uh, dialing in from uh, Deepest Cornwall. So thanks, James. I'm assuming you're on holiday. Uh, allegedly, yeah. <laughs> well, it's, it's great am, to spend yeah. time with you. Well, uh, and then we've also got Phil as well, so it's great to have a, a, a player's point of view as well. Uh, now, we did um hope to have Johnny from the advert, but with all the things that are going on, um, he, he just simply can't make it. He's gonna, I think, he's gonna spend the evening putting the adver advertiser sports pages together tonight, so um. I think you know we've got great varied views and, and as normal if people have got any uh questions or they want to make any comments uh, just put them in facebook and, and we'll feed them up to the panel okay so i'm going to leave you and i'll speak to you later pete thanks very much indeed we should also say uh, we did ask if, if clem could come on tonight but i think it's fair to say james that the man is a little busy right now and there is an official news conference tomorrow at four o'clock that's right isn't it yeah, that's right, um, Vic. He's, um, I think he's maximising the time that he's in the UK. So, um, you know, I think they'll be working late tonight. And, um, yeah, there's a press conference at four o'clock tomorrow where, um, you know, you'll obviously the press will get to meet Clem, but also I believe they're going to um, announce and um, introduce the new CEO. So, obviously, um, first and foremost, Anna, your, your thoughts on what's happened in the last 24 hours. Um, I arrived at Supermarine last night around about half past five, Beautiful balmy evening to watch a pre-season friendly 
And it was all just coming out then. Everything was happening. People were smiling, wondering what's going on. What were your thoughts when you heard the news? Uh, yeah, I'm still sort of reading, reading in shock a little bit, to be honest. Um, you know, despite the trust, very positive um, forays into into the media in the last few weeks, it's been you've been waiting to see us cross that line and have it all confirmed. So, even yesterday, when the, when obviously Clem Morfuni was at the at the Supermarine game, um, which I I couldn't make, um, I was still waiting to see that statement today to say confirmation as new owner. Because after all we've been through, it's um, you know you just want to see those eyes eyes dotted and t's crossed. So um, it's it's just it, and, and with the news that's come out today, you know we've got a new head coach, we've got a director of football. Uh, as we heard from Pete, they've been in touch with the supporters club already. It's just um, all the things that have been done in the space of a few hours, all the things that the previous regime failed to do over years. So. Uh, it's kind of exciting, you know, it's exciting, exciting times. And I think things are going to move really quickly, aren't they? So yeah, indeed. To, uh, um, yeah, we should also say that, we, uh, you know, Clem has promised that he will come on one of these panels as, as soon as the dust settles. And I think that's fair enough. And, you know, we should let uh, him get on with what he's doing. Uh, Phil, from a player's point of view, uncertainty, uncertainty, uncertainty. Then not certain, uh, then certainty. How, how would it be for... Um, well, yeah, obviously, uh, not getting paid um, and things like that. There, there is a, a bit of a worry, and like the same as as, as the supporters, really. That that kind of uh, never really knowing until it's signed on the dotted line. But then, you know, as players, you're kind of used to that kind of thinking. Nothing's really ever done until the ink's dry. Um, so, you know, there would have been a lot of uncertainty, a lot of probably stress and everything with with the wages and that. But now that that looks like it's going to be um, you know, sort it out, you know, relatively quickly. Then, then yeah, I, I would assume that everyone's, you know, you know, they, they will be, you know, excited about what's going to happen, you know, in, in the future, really, and looking forward to getting some 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 players in the door. Yeah, and and I would think uh, from a playing point of view, uh, you would know more than most. You know, two weeks before the start of the season, effectively, they've had COVID in the camp as well. Mm. Um, no manager as such and uh, for pre-season training. It's all been a bit of a dog's breakfast, quite frankly, and now they just want to get on with it, sign some players and sort it out, don't they? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, you know, and it is it can be hard when there's that many distractions and not just like, is, with, with, with distractions in terms of, you know, off, off the field, it doesn't really that much. But when you've, you know, you've got like eight senior players uh, and no manager and you're three weeks away, then that is, you know, that is obviously unsettling. And that. So to, to be able to see that a resolution will be coming, you know, quickly, that will, that will you know, focus the minds and all the lads that are there, I'm sure. Yeah. Now, lots of comments coming in already. This from Andy, the communication from the club is a breath of fresh air. Uh, from Tim, a big thanks again to all the members of the Trust for never giving up. Uh, from Lee, can't believe the club's communicated already. Uh, this from Matthew James, and there was a bit of confusion yesterday. Maybe you can clear this up. There was a statement put out by the Trust that Clem Morfuni wasn't in the UK, wasn't going to be till 2022, and so therefore wasn't going to be at Supermarine last night. And then, I don't know, an hour later, he is in the UK. He will be at the Supermarine tonight, etc. Can you clear that one up? Uh, it's simply that we get our communications from the trust from the from the lawyers access. Um, I don't believe they naturally wanted. <clears throat> uh, I think it was a last minute thing. Um, you know, I think ultimately we were, were we were of the belief that it was going to be very difficult for Clem to get out of Australia. But I believe he's been given. Um, he, he had he applied for kind of special permission to fly on business purposes, um, which none of us knew about. So uh, until the last minute. So literally when we put out that statement saying that he wasn't in the country, that was the situation at the time that we, you know, as we knew it. Um, and then ultimately they managed to get him into the country through whatever means they, they managed. Um, don't quite know how that happened, but anyway, it happened. Um, so, yeah, literally, it, you know, there was no one. And I know there's been a few things on social media about it. It's, there's no conspiracy that we're trying to hide anything from anyone. It was literally the whole board. No one knew that he was in the country until very much last minute. So, yeah. Do we know how long he's here for? I mean, he's got a lot of work I, to do, obviously. I don't know. No, no, I don't know. Um, I would imagine, given the amount of work that's got to be done, though, 
um you know it's going to be a little while i would imagine so yeah okay yeah uh this is uh from jamie great to hear the club is already communicating today from matthew any news on what is happening with the new kit uh, that is something I've got to sort out, James, to be fair, isn't it? I mean, they were wearing training tops last night and to be fair, I quite like them. I, you know, nice plain red shirt. That's fine with me. But uh, I, I don't know. Uh, you know, that's got to be sorted out because as I understand it, the sponsorship deal with Puma, they kind of run out. So they need to have a new one. Yeah, I mean, I'd, again, I guess it's on a very, very long list that the new CEO and the, the you know, the team that obviously there need to sort out. I'm sure... Danny, um, you know, behind the scenes has been desperately working on something, um, waiting for the the takeover to a takeover to occur. But I have no idea who that is and what 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 it is. Whether we extended Puma, I, I would imagine, you know, that those Puma kits they've been wearing were last seasons and literally were just worn because there's nothing been kind of signed, sealed, and delivered. And I would imagine also because of the situation of the club, probably a, a shirt sponsor. Um, probably wouldn't have wanted to sign a deal with us anyway until the no. takeover had occurred. So I, I, I would imagine there's something lined up. I don't know who it is. Um, but obviously now, given the takeover's happened, they can get on get on and, and sort that out now. So, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot going on. Um, this is from Mark. I just want to buy a season ticket. First one for years. Uh, I think, Anna, what is... Oh, this is from Jamie. Will we be able to watch the press conference tomorrow? Uh, I, well, I don't know whether it will be streamed on YouTube or whatever, but anyway, uh, that's when I'll throw open and maybe answer later. Uh, the thing is, Anna, many of us have been approaching the start of this season with trepidation about the fact we might not be able to go and watch Swindon because of various reasons, and now we can. Uh, how do you feel about that, Anna? Yeah, I mean, at, at this point, I think everyone's saying, give me a season ticket, give me a shirt, <laughs> give me some games to go and watch, just throw it all at me. And uh, and that's very much the position I'm in. You know, it's a bit it's a bit um, gung ho happy at the moment. There are lots of things to do, aren't there? There's so many things for them to get right and do. But they've already started off well today. Um, and with the appointment of, of Ben Garner as head coach, I think we we're just as, as supporters just keen to get behind him. I'm sure, uh, despite some misgivings in some quarters. Because we've got a, we've got a team that's now going to play in League Two this season, and, and a few weeks ago we didn't think that was going to happen. So right now it's just throw it at us, ask for our help if you need it as as fans. Um, yeah, so I think it's just bring it bring it on really, whatever the whatever the season holds. Um, you know, give, give it. To, uh, the one the one the one thing I wanted to throw in there just to, just to add, obviously the EFL statement um, confirming, which was yesterday I think, wasn't it confirming that. Clemore Fooney had passed the fit and proper persons test had a little tiny caveat at the end didn't it saying we're still looking at the ownership issues previously so there are a lot of things I know I know Clemore Fooney is aware of these of these things and the and the creditors that he's got to address and so on um so we're not we're not out of the woods in terms of in in many respects but um we've got a good a good plan for moving forward now yeah, uh, this is from Richard. No, this is what sums up a, a lot of people's feelings. It's a massive storm cloud finally lifted from over STFC's head. And reading Clem's statement, which he released this afternoon before he released another segment about the, uh, the head coach and the, and the director of football, uh, it seems he knows what he wants. And uh, basically on this panel, he said what he wants a few weeks ago. And, uh, and that was pretty much what was in the statement this afternoon. Let's survive this season and then push on. Uh, from Robert, any volunteers needed in the next few weeks? Uh, official supporters club will contact the club to see how fans can help. And I think we've mentioned on here, maybe a fans day to get get in there and do whatever is necessary. Uh, Phil, this is all going on. And, and the one thing players have to do before the start of a season is work on shapes. They have to work on, you know, possibilities of what might occur in the season. They've had sort of eight or nine players. Uh, Anthony Grant played last night, I know, for half of the game. Whatever the situation is with that, I'm, I'm, I don't know. But how difficult is it then to suddenly put a shape together? Do you know what I mean? What system are you going to play? Um, well, yeah, I mean, it's 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 they'll they'll you're frozen. Sorry for a minute. You're um, you make no mistake about it. They're going to be behind um, because um, with the best in the world, you know. Um, Lee and Steve have been doing great up to now, but the, you know the new manager's got uh, three weeks to get um, 
what, 10, 12 players in the door um, and, and get him to play shape and understand what he's going to do. You know, it's, I wouldn't say nigh on impossible, but it, it's a tough ask to get that to hit the ground running on day one of the season. So <coughs> uh, I'm sure everyone will be doing everything they can, but it, it will be tough to get things sorted out. And, and you know, uh, the feel good factor with that, with the new takeover and everything, and, and, and uh, the supporters fully behind everybody. You know, that might uh, help out loads, you know, um, in terms of results and, and, and playing and everything. But, yeah, they, they will be. It, it is a tough ask to get stuff ready for the, for the beginning of the season now. And I, I think everyone's really yeah. sticking that and understands that. And, and it'll be tough. The play, but then the players will be up for it. You know, new ones coming in. Um, you know, they, if they've been waiting in, in the wings, you know, for this to happen, they'll be buzzing to finally get on the training pitch and training again. You know, some lads might not have thought they'd have got a club. And now all of a sudden they got you know a, a club, a good club. So you know um, lots of things can turn around. But I would imagine you know it will be it'll be a, a feel good factor for, you know for the lads and that coming into the season now. But you know they might be a little bit behind in terms of you know shape and, and actually what they're going to do. But I would say fitness and everything like that would be fine. But it'll just be you know how they want to play and everything like that. But the manager will obviously know what he's doing. There. And I would imagine as a player, the one thing you'd want to do is run into that atmosphere for the first home game against Carlisle, wouldn't you? Because the county ground will be a pretty good place to be that day, won't it? It'll be a fantastic atmosphere, whatever the result. And, I, and you know, we all dearly want Swindon to win every game, clearly. But clearly this season that ain't going to happen. But, you know, that'll be a fantastic atmosphere, won't it? Yeah, uh, and I think people are starved of it, you know. And um, players love players love playing because of playing in front of crowds and, and people cheering their names and, and um, giving them a boost and the adrenaline that comes from it. So, yeah, that, they'll be, it will be an amazing day um, getting everyone back in the county ground. And, and I kind of hope that they don't have the game before the first game so that people can go in. I kind of hope they save it for the first game of the season almost. So that it's just that euphoria moment where everyone's in, open the floodgates, pack yourselves in, have a great day. Um, you know, whatever happens. So, yeah, uh, the, the players will be absolutely buzzing to so, have so back. I mean, you see what it was like just in the Euros now, you know, how, just watching it on the telly, how, how much better and amazing it felt to watch a game with, with crowds in on the telly. So, you know, you know, uh, envious of you all going into the county ground to watch a game and then getting behind the team like so. Yeah, be yeah and, uh, there is a friendly scheduled next week, I think, against Peterborough. On the Saturday, I haven't heard any more news about that. So whether there is or not, we don't know. Uh, lots of uh, things going on here. This is from Liam. The press release referred to youth and experience. Sort from the panel on the likes of Grant and Caddis. My view on Pittman is he can be let go based on his current absence. Uh, from Graham, when are the club going to open the club shop again? As I get need to get my new STFC shop. <laughs> We all want to know when the shops open, I think. And from Glenn, I wonder what's going to happen to the club with the standing ownership situation. Well, James, that, of course, continues. There's another trial, isn't there, uh, coming up with the standing... Uh, um, oh, gosh, I can't remember. The, uh, Barry situation, that's still to go ahead, isn't it? So that's an unknown at the moment. Uh, 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 we can't really comment on that, James, can we? Because we don't know. We haven't got a crystal ball. No, I mean, I think... Uh, one thing I would say is I think Lee Powell, when he went on TalkSport Radio last week, kind of alluded to it, you know, um, that, you know, that's the next thing for him to kind of, that, that he's going to be dealing with. But I think, um, yeah, September the 4th or 5th, I think, the court case. So I guess we'll wait in here. Um, and I would imagine the EFL and FA will be watching that very closely to see see what the outcome is. Um, and then we'll probably hear from e either or both of those as to whether there's any, um, you know, implications, um, I guess. Uh, to the club, I really hope there isn't. I really hope it's really just standing and leap power that if you know when punishments are given, they're given to those two individuals and not the club. But we never can tell with these things, can we? Unfortunately. Uh, from Mel, will Clem be the first? Well, at the first home game, be nice to make it a party. Well, you said you're not sure how long he's in the UK for, so. And I assume, I don't know, you know, if you go back to Australia, you face quarantine, don't you? Unless there is special dispensation, I don't know. Because their travel restrictions are a lot tougher than ours, aren't they? Yeah, they are. And I think that's why we, we were quite surprised that he actually managed to, to get out of the country. So, um, yeah, I would imagine he's going to have to self-isolate when he goes back and, uh, you know, all that kind of good stuff. So I don't know how long he's here for. We'll hopefully try and find that out for, for fans. 
Um, from Tom, has the transfer embargo been officially lifted yet? And from Gareth, what's the situation with the embargo and new players? Well, I'm assuming that's to be sorted out in the next couple of days. Would I be right in that? Because that's kind of a, a priority, would you think? Yeah, the, the, the EFL loan of about £800,000 needs to be repaid before the embargo is lifted. That's definitely one of the things that's on Clem's kind of, you know, urgent to-do list because we are restricted. You know, we can only pay a certain salary uh, for players, um, which would be OK. The salary cap, I think, is, I think, 1200 uh per week uh, for, league to, for League Two for, for players under the embargo, which... You know, if you look at the average salary of a League Two player, it's a little bit higher than that. Not much, but a little bit higher. Um, so we would be restricted until that embargo is lifted on on salaries. In terms of players, um, we believe that um, uh, Ben Chorley has been doing a lot of work behind the scenes, a new director of football, um, in identifying players and, and talking to players. There are players lined up, as we understand it. Obviously, we needed the takeover to go on, uh, to go ahead before that. Those things can be kind of put over the line. So hopefully we'll see some announcements on players over the next few days as well. Uh, this is from John. Let's flood Scunthorpe with fans to show our support for the new setup. I, I don't know about you, Anna, but I've not seen anything about away fans in football grounds. Uh, you know, the, they've lifted all the restrictions. But have you seen anything on that? I mean, I haven't read anything about away fans. No, you're right. We haven't heard anything, have we? I mean, I, I was working under the assumption that we'll be we'll be attending away games uh, within the within the boundaries of, of capacity limits, whatever they want to enforce. But I think that, that that's uh, one of the things that everyone's looking forward to doing. I think is is going to mm. going to away games, um, but it remains to be seen, doesn't it? And and I take your point that for the for the home games or any games we we can attend, we need to make it a really positive atmosphere for. For the for the for the players and for the whole community of of Swindon Town Football Club, really, because we've come so far from being, you know, we've come from being on the brink, really, of not having a club at all, and uh, that that can only be positive, you know, whatever whatever happens in the future, um, and yeah, we've just got to move forward, we move forward together. The thing is, Phil, you've been involved with the football club for a long time as a player and you've been on the fringes of it and in coaching capacities and things like that. And it's been miserable, quite frankly, hasn't it? I mean, we've done any number of these panels where the only time we had a bit of optimism, I think, was at the beginning of the last season. I remember us saying we were top of the table after one game and you said you should enjoy it because you never know what's around the corner. Boy, what was around the corner. I mean, it is nice to be positive for once, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Um, and I think um, you know, on another, I, I think the, the, you know, the clubs have you know over the recent recent years, it's most enjoyable seasons in League Two in, in terms of you know results and, and good feeling around the club. So it, there's always there's always um, there's always room for optimism. Um, and obviously with this with this going on, obviously the, 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 the optimism must be with everyone must be you know through the roof of what's going on. So. Um, yeah, enjoy it. Like, it. Just just enjoy being back at football, wouldn't it? It just could be an amazing, an amazing couple of months for everyone just to get used to it all. Uh, just on the the subject of, of travelling, you're involved with a club in Indonesia, aren't you? And and obviously that means travelling for you. How difficult is that? Um, well, at the minute it's it's um, it's fairly easy because I'm not going anywhere. Um, <laughs> but it's, I mean. Um, I think probably what you probably find with, with Clem and they've got some some very clever people that will work behind the scenes and will know the ins and outs of visas and travel restrictions and and um, what uh, what you can and you can't travel for and it's all about filling out forms and that. So I mean, um, yeah, we went over to Indonesia last last year um, just before the, the second lockdown and there was people over there sorting out visas. Um, so. You know, when we went over there, there was like 10 people on the plane. So Claire must have been the only person on the plane coming over from Australia. You know, he must have been <laughs> loving it. So, um, it's, um, yeah, I mean, it, it's it's just, I think it's just a pain in the arse, like, sorry, uh, just filling out the forms and, and knowing what you've got to say and what you've got to do. But, yeah, it, it's, um, I'm, I'm sure you, you've got clever people and he paid him a lot of money to, to get him where he needs to go. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, this from Steve, has Lee Peacock been assured a role? I, I, I mean, I saw in that statement about Ben Chorley and Ben Garner, he was thanked. That normally means, James, he's leaving. Uh, do we know any more? I mean, what we should say at this point, 
thank you to those loyal members of staff and players who stuck by the club through this dreadful time, really, and not knowing whether they were going to get paid next week to next month, next year. So we, we ought to say thank you very much indeed to those people publicly. But do we know about Lee Peacock, who, um, you know, stepped up to the plate, didn't he? Let's be fair. Yeah, absolutely. Um, as I as I understand it, all of the, the 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 individuals that weren't necessarily named, so you know, all the backroom team, you know, the kit man and all that kind of good stuff, and and Lee Peacock, Peacock all, all remain. I think Lee Peacock's Peacock's going back to his previous role, working with the right. youth. Um, which I think he's on record said that's his preference anyway. Uh, he's, he, he wants to work with the with the up and coming uh, young players rather than necessary at the moment with the the kind of pros in the first team. So yeah, I believe he goes back to that. Um, yeah, so I think that's that's how it stands really. Yeah, and Steve Narbit staying as head of youth, uh, and, uh, and from what you've just said, that goes along with that really. Uh, this from that was from Mitchell from Derek uh, E. Hello, Derek. Uh, great news that the takeover has gone through at last, but I feel we could still be looking at a difficult season on the pitch. I think the thing is, Anna, we all kind of, you know, we said many times on here, above the dotted line will do, as far as I'm concerned. And if it's below the dotted line, it's below the dotted line. But bear in mind where we were 48 hours ago, I'd accept third from bottom with great gratitude, quite frankly, wouldn't you? Yeah, I mean, we, we've got to, we've got to at one at the same time celebrate and be cautious because you know this is this is whole new ground for us. We've got a rush of information coming out at, at us: new appointments, players, uh, strategies, communication with the fans, um, and at the same time, we've got to have that eye on what's going to happen on the pitch. And to be honest, you know, we we are um, we are just glad to be playing this season. If it means, uh, and, and it is going to be a struggle, as, as Phil pointed out, you know the that we're, we're starting from a really bad position in terms of the number of players we've got. We haven't got, we haven't got tactics. Uh, we don't know what style we're going to play. Um, so we're, we're really, you know, six weeks behind or more behind the other League Two clubs. Um, but the point, the point is that the takeover has happened. If things go a little bit pear-shaped on the pitch this season, Clem Wolfini has already said, you know, this is a rebuilding season, let's face it. Uh, a rebuilding season, not like the other rebuilding seasons where you have, you know, a shed load of low knees come in and you've got to start from scratch. But this is fundamental base up in every aspect of the club. So let's just uh, kind of take it step by step, work out um, where where we can where we can as supporters, um, you know, so help help out with any aspect of what's going on. And um, I think just take it bit by bit, really. Let's not let's not rush into thinking this is going to be a disaster because at the moment I'm just feeling positive. Um, and let's um, let's 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 see what happens. Let's also you know make sure that we're holding people to account for what they promised. Is what I would say as well. Well, I was going to make that very point, and uh, we'll get onto that in a minute. Um, this is from Pete. Do we need to temper our excitement, realising that on the playing front, we'll most likely be in for a rough couple of months, possibly until January? Well, that goes along with with that one. Um, uh, and from Nick, James, this is, uh, is that a happy robin singing away in the background or is it a Cornish chuff? What is it uh, that you've got in the background there singing away happily? That's a happy robin. <laughs> is it? Very yes. good. Yeah. 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 yeah, it's been annoying me all afternoon. <laughs> Uh, it, it sounds very nice to have birds song in the background. Um, Phil's in an attic and, and melting, I think, Phil, aren't you, at this particular moment in time? Absolutely. Uh, it's, a prelim, yeah. it's a prelim for about half 11. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we're all having difficulty with that thing called sleeping at the moment, aren't we? Um, and in terms of the players and, and what they've gone through, how, how much of a bonding thing is that, Phil, when you've been through adversity, when a club's been... I mean, goodness me, Swindon have been close to the brink on several occasions in the past. But how, is that a bonding exercise for those that were there during it? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, and I had a similar sort of thing when I was at Portsmouth, where when the fans bought the the, the club, um, you know, that was, uh, uh, you know, that had that kind of effect on, because people were uncertain of what was going on. All the players were on month-to-month -month contracts. Um, not sure what's going on. The fans took over. Um, feel good fact that you know everyone's sort of secure. Then you know players were getting offered sort of normal contracts. And uh, I think that year, I think it, it was in League One. I think they probably lost twenty-two or twenty or games in a row, something stupid like that. 
and then all of a sudden they started winning games, you know, from that. Um, and there was a, you know, camaraderie between everybody. You know, I still speak to some of them, you know, now. Um, there was uh, players coming back from the Premiership, things like that. But it, yeah, it does. You feel part of, you feel more part of the, I think, part of the, the, the club even more so. Do you know what I mean? Because you've kind of, you've suffered together and you come out the other side. There's always that. There's always that um, bond. When you suffer together and you come out the other side, you know, you can look each other in the eyes and sort of say, you know, well done, and you know, and you 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 understand each other's plight as well. So yeah, I think it will it will bring them together. There'll be, you know, there'll, there'll be some you know sort of relationships built for life out of this, and and I think it'll be good for the for them as players this year as well. I think they'll do well coming out of it as well. Yeah, and I think it'll be nice for the supporters to show their appreciation for those players who, you know, the likes of Dion Conroy, who's had a miserable time of it with injury and a miserable time of it at the end of last season uh, with uh, the management of the club. You know, I think he, he deserves a lot of credit for sticking with it and coming through the other side. So that would be good to see, I hope. Uh, um, <laughs> That's always from, that, I hope, because you never know. With some yeah, I, you ne- <laughs> you've been, you, listen, Phil, you've been there. You know what I mean by that, don't you? <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> this is, do we know who owns the old Highworth Golf Club? This is from, I think, James, um, is that, you know, the training complex at Highworth? Goodness me. Um, who knows? What, do you know what's happening with that? Any idea? Um, Clem's nothing to do with it. I know that. Um, there's nothing. There's no interest, um, you know, kind of commercially with him, it, it, with that. As I understand it and as we understand it, the trust, I think, you know, Lee Power owns that. Um, obviously, by all accounts, the the standing versus power uh court case there's an element of that that's involved with the with the golf course as well because i believe um you know they they went into it it kind of in a in a kind of joint kind of an agreement but um yeah nothing to do with the current club now and obviously now the club's moved on in terms of owner um you know i don't know what happened i mean you know i think one of the things that you know lee power obviously was was looking to redevelop all of that obviously and he's put the plans in for it but Obviously, one of the, the elements that got him over the line was the fact he was putting a training ground. And, you know, I, I would imagine that's had certainly uh, it would have been a positive thing for, for the planners seeing that. So if the club are not going to use that potentially now, I don't know quite where that leaves him either. So um, not that that's obviously our worry anymore, but uh, yeah. OK. Um, and Clem, this is from Stephen. Clem has already mentioned the advisory board. Any ideas on how the makeup of the board should be? If I remember rightly, in, in the first statements, I'm trying to get my head around how many statements there have been today, <laughs> there was mention of a member of the advisory board, wasn't there? Yeah, so the advisory board will, sim- will be, um, you know, I think he, Clem wants uh, people from the different uh, supporters groups. So, the you know, the official supporters club, the trust, uh, probably, you know, GW Reds or maybe the the, the disabled club as well. Um, I think Don Rogers is going to be part of that as well. Um, yeah, he mentioned from that. What, yeah, fr- yeah. From what Clem was saying. So a couple of, old, you know, a couple of people that have been involved in the club. Um, yeah. And so I, th- I think, you know, it's going to be a group of individuals, probably with the CEO, the new CEO and other, other members of the of the backroom staff. So, yeah, I think it's I think it's a great thing. And I think the fact that he's mentioned that immediately in his first press release, you know, is, is a great thing, because I think, as we've already said this season, um, you know, the, the, the new owner and. The, the the team there are going to need all of the fan support as much as possible, whether it be, you know, helping with the county ground, you know, getting behind the team on the, on the pitch. So I think having that advisory board immediately will be a great thing. So, yeah. Uh, from my, let's just stay in the EFL this season. Uh, from Jake, do we know if Stanley will now be against Clem for the ownership of the club? Well, as I understand it, Clem now has the majority shareholding, doesn't he? So if they, if that was to happen, that's another court battle, isn't it? Uh, well, Clem now owns the football club. Um, yeah, you know he's, he's the majority shareholder. So, you know, ultimately the the court case really is to decide um, the financials around um, you know who owned the club when when Lee Power was chairman, and and ultimately you know their their percentage agreement because obviously, as we saw from the court case, you know, um, Standing allegedly put this money up front um, to help buy Swinner Town. Uh, and then they had a, a gentleman's agreement where ultimately, you know, any player sales, the profits would be split between them. 
Um, by all accounts, that didn't happen from from the looking at the court case details. Uh, so that's really what the court case is about, you know. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, Are you still there, Cornwall? Yes, I'm, I'm here. Yep, yep. Yeah, sorry. Okay. It all went a bit strange for a minute, but that's the internet for you. Uh, yeah, Apologies. Where, where you? Sorry, I got lost there. <laughs> that's all right. No, no, um, I was just saying that I think um, the, the court case really is to decide all the financials um, around um, you know, standing versus power, you know, the money that got put in, the percentage that they that they owned, and also percentage of um player sales ultimately you know and and sell on fees and what have you so that's really what it's all about so yeah should shouldn't really impact the club uh, as such really okay um and briefly on this one do we have any news of the safety certificate for the ground of course that's quite important uh that'll be another piece of news that needs to come out as to whether it's it's, it's capable of hosting league football isn't it and there's another point here uh let me just see oh yeah from greg can we apply to delay the start of our season um it's always a possibility i know extra city who put a new pitch in wanted to have their first game of the season away from home and guess what they're at home so you can apply but i don't know whether it works <laughs> i'd say that's unlikely <laughs> that we, we would yeah. get any kind of delay yeah. Yeah. Anna, you mentioned about holding the owner to, a, uh, to account. And that's very important because, OK, it's a great deal of euphoria. Clem has said an awful lot and we appreciate everything he said. But of course, at the end of the day, we want to know that goes through and things are going ahead. And I think he realises it's very important that it's, he's accountable, doesn't he? Uh, yeah, I mean, he's, he's, he's not short of words, is he, Clem? You know, when he releases a statement, it's... Uh... Can you hear me okay? Yeah, yeah, all fine. Can you hear me? Um, yeah. Yeah, when, when, Clem, when, when Clem releases a statement, you know, you're, you're, you're paging down multiple times, aren't you? It's not short. Um, so he's obviously got a lot to say. He's got a lot in his head about what he wants to achieve. And, and reading those statements in the last couple of days, it's kind of, you know, it's, it's kind of almost read it and weep in, in a positive way because... You read that and you think, is this really somebody who's talking about our football club when we're, with all we've been through in the past and the lack of communication with the previous ownership? Um, but he's said a lot. He's promised a lot. And I'm sure he won't mind us saying that we want to hold him to account. A lot of the things that he's talked about doing actually don't cost a lot of money. They cost effort and coordination. So talking to the fans doesn't cost you money, particularly. It's about working with us to do what's right for the club. And he recognises that he's that the town is, he's the custodian is what he's, his expression, I think, of the club. So he's, yeah. he's looking after it on behalf of the community and the fans. Uh, so holding him to account on those things that he's promised, I think is is part of the role of the trust and the supporters club in whatever way they want to you know, divide that up and whoever is, is present on that advisory board. Um, but the other thing I wanted to say is that one, one thing that we need to recognise and, and Clem Wolfrini needs to recognise as well is that this, this positivity and relationship won't go on for very long. You know, it may well be, or it may, you know, it, it depends, doesn't it, on results on the pitch, I think, principally. But he's got to milk this relationship now for all it's worth because you get a downturn in fortunes on the pitch. The, you know, fans, some fans won't take long to turn and you've really, you, and you've got to re work through that relationship like you would do a bad marriage or a bad patch in your marriage you know discuss keep the communication channels open even when you feel that the pressure is on you unfairly and I think that's why I expect to see from him that he'll carry on the dialogue no matter what happens and I think that's really important yeah uh, Phil this is from John Ben Garner has been described as head coach does that mean he's our new manager now you, you know as a player <laughs> does the term head coach, manager, chief bottle washer, does it mean anything or is he the guy that tells you what to do effectively? Yeah, <clears throat> no, he's, he's, he, as far as the, the player is concerned, he, he'll be the manager, he'll be the gaffer, like, so um, he's going to be the one that they go to, he's going to be the one to tell them what to do, he's the one that's in charge of them, so he's their manager, so he might have uh, other bits and bobs um, maybe different to a manager in terms of the running of, of everything, but he'll be the players, he'll be their gaffer. So that's, you know, there, there's no other two ways about that sort of thing. As far as I'm, I would I assume anyway, you know, 
there's not going to be anybody else that they're kind of talking to, um, giving them instructions, really, in that in that respect, I don't think. And have you worked under a head coach, stroke manager, stroke chief bottle washer? Have you, have you, you know, I definitely, have you I've, done I've, that? I've been, I think I've been the chief bottle washer. Um, <laughs> I don't, to be honest, I don't even know, of it, to be fair. Um, not as far as I'm aware, but they might have been head coach uh, and not really kind of know. Maybe, maybe at Portsmouth, maybe Guy Whitlam was head coach. I'm not really sure, to be honest. Um, Does it matter? You go into a train nah. happening every day, and he's the bloke who tells you what to do, basically, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, and and managers managers aren't formed by what they're called; they're formed by the way that they act and the way that they interact with their players and and they conduct themselves around around the ground. So uh, it, it's you know he could be chief bottle washer, but if he's the one that's telling you what to do and you and you you respect him and you trust him, and he it, it, that's the way that it is. You know, it could be what he's on his pay packet is chief bottle washer but if he's the one that tells you what to do it's not about what's on the bit of paper it's about how he how he how he does his job uh, how do you earn players respect uh, it's a a word that is banded about in football isn't it but how as a player do you feel respect for a, a manager stroke head coach whatever how does that work i think it, it's it's um Man management is a massive thing about it. Knowing how to deal with with people, um, and, and courage of your convictions as well, um, and you know your, your general manner. You know you got you got to get them on board in terms of making them believe in what you're what you're telling them to do, um, treating players with respect, um, but also you know not letting people run over you either. There's a fine line, you know. You got to have. It's like. Um, you know, people have their different styles, but you've got to have, um, you basically just got to be consistent and, and have the, the, the courage of convictions, get get people, get people on site. There'll be some people that won't be happy. It's the one, it's dealing with, dealing with the, the, the players that you don't want. That's, that's the, that's how you kind of earn respect from the others. Because, because if you, if you can do that well, then, you know, that will, that will bode well for the rest of it. Because that's the worst part of the job. You can deal with, yeah. deal with sort of handling that sort of side of it because they'll, they'll if you deal with it badly they're the ones that then they'll start talking to their mates and oh, he's done this he's done that and, um and that sort of spirals out a little bit more then i think but you know dealing with the worst part of the job that you know then, then if you can do that well then that'll that'll be a good start i think that's what well, gareth southgate got, did very well because he ain't got any players at the minute so. yeah, that's true. <laughs> you you're, you're playing you're playing you're playing you're playing but that's <laughs> yeah. what gareth southgate did very well during the euros wasn't it he he, he said that the people who weren't playing were the most important part of that squad because they were the ones yeah. who kept that squad going, even though they'd not had any game time. Yeah, you got to make everyone feel a part of it all, you know, and especially with this season, with what's going on, um, you know, you don't know how many players that actually they're going to get over the line. So he's going to need everybody on side. So, you know, um, yeah, and it is, it's important. Like I say, you keep that going, the people that aren't happy, you know that that will boost everybody else up really because then you know it, it just all spirals from, from there. And he's right, Gareth Southgate. You know, well, not right that they're the most important, but you've got to make them feel important. I think to to uh, to, to go. Me, obviously, spending most of my career sat on the bench anyway. I know how important it is to kind of to feel wanted, and that you know, if you can do that, it, it will it will all build from there. I think. Yeah, I had my boots and my. Uh, in the boot last night on the way to Supermarine. Didn't get a call up. <laughs> disappointed. Uh, this is from Rob. Uh, I'd give my right arm for a third bottom and that would be a result. Uh, third bottom should be celebrated as if we won the league considering the circumstances. Uh, this from Martin. Town will have to use the loan market to bolster the squad. Hopefully Ben Chorley has a lot lined up. Uh, from Mark Merriman. Anna, this is the question that we've asked uh, Mark many times on this panel that the course of this year... Let's um, be positive yeah. and back the new regime to the hilt. I have my season ticket money ready. <laughs> oh, yeah. I thought he'd be in there. <laughs> he's, ab he's absolutely right. You know, we, we, we've got to get 100% behind what's, uh, what's going on. And, and no matter what happens on the pitch, we've got a football club. So I think it's a bit frozen. I think yeah. he might have done. Yeah, he's happy though. Look, <laughs> yeah, he looks very happy. <laughs> so I don't, I don't know, James, whether we know anything more about any of those players that um, that were playing last last night that you talked about. Oh, some of the ones. That I'm back. Hello. <laughs> 
Yeah, sorry. Uh, uh, I, 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 yeah, I was just, uh, just asking Ma Vic whether anyone knew anything about player signings as you were absent. Uh, Mark Merriman, yes. Um, it was a question we've asked on this panel many times throughout the course of the last year. He is going to get a season ticket. How about that? Yeah. Wow. Brilliant. Well, there, there was that was that was not going to be in doubt, was it? Um, I think, <laughs> and hopefully, hopefully, people like you know Derek Elston as well, who and a number of us have said backing the trusts, uh, the trust uh, protest there that we were going to withhold our money in various ways from the previous regime. Uh, that, that's completely gone now. So as I said, I think I said at the beginning, give us the season tickets now because we want, you know, we want them. And I think. Uh, there's going to be a lot of there's going to be a lot of revenue streams available for the club, which which weren't there before, provided that they can sort things out quickly, like you know shirt sales and so forth. Yeah. Um, right. Lots going on here. Uh, uh, this is from Nick. Did Anthony Grant give any indication last night that he may be part of the new team? Well, there was a big cheer when he came on at half time. I can tell you. Uh, <laughs> Nice to see the general back. We don't know is the answer. Well, I don't know anyway. Uh, this from Derek Hand. Why is everyone so negative when we still have players signed who are a success in League Two? Well, Jordan Lydon's still here, of course. Uh, Jack Payne is still here from last season. Uh, so, uh, uh, Matthew negative? Baudry is still here. I haven't heard anything. Well, I think he means, I think he means the fact that... Uh, maybe, or, or maybe the fact that we said to the bottom would be a success, but we, we mean that from the very low base that we're starting from. Yeah. I think just, vol I think just volume of players. I think that's that's the issue. I, I don't think there's probably an issue with quality. It's, it's just volume. Yeah. You know, um, if you've got if you've got six or seven, you know, players, um, you know. You're going to lose, <laughs> you know. Yeah. If that's all you've got, you, you, you're going to struggle because you're, you're you know, like right, the kids coming through and everything. But I think just volume of players. There's a lot of work to do to get, a, you know, to get players in. There's a good base in terms of quality, probably, but it, it's just the volume of players really because you can't rely on them seven for, for um, you know, for, for 46 games or whatever it is. We're pretty much used to playing with no. No, the injuries will play a part. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> uh, this is from Ian. What's the situation with Grounds and Pittman? Uh, neither have appeared in any pre-season games. Are they still at the club? Well, as I understand it, Brett Pittman still has a deal with the club, doesn't he? Uh, but he hasn't turned up because there's been no payment. James, do you know any more about that? I don't know formally, Vic, but I, I heard the same thing. I heard that he, he won't return to training or playing for the club until uh, his wages are paid. Um and I think Grounds, wasn't he one of the people that was in isolation? Yeah, it's in isolation, yeah. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> yeah, so, so I, I heard that rumour on Brett Pittman as well. But what's his actual contractual situation? I thought we had an option to extend by a year. Is that is that right? Or is, it, is he actually still under contract? You know? I, I believe he's still under contract. Um <laughs> Yeah, and I, I just heard that literally he, because he hasn't been paid, uh, although, you know, I, I believe the players have been paid now through through the kind of PFA or whatever. So, uh, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I believe Pittman's under contract still, so I don't know quite what's going on there. But obviously he's within his rights not to turn up, I believe, if he hasn't been paid. Yeah, so yeah, I believe so. But, but I don't know what we think it says about the play himself when you've got other players there that are... Have, have remained and, and shown yes. faith in whatever they sort of commitment. Exactly. Something, I think. And, and, and probably paid about a fifth of what he earns as well that actually turn up. So um, it does, I think you're right, Anna. I think it says an awful lot. Uh, Phil, Phil, this is true. So, yeah. I was going to say, Phil. Phil, it, Phil it, about that, yeah. well, I think everyone's circumstance is different. You know, I don't think you can blame someone for not, not coming if they're not getting paid. But, you know, obviously, um, it doesn't look too good when there's only one or two of you that don't and, and the rest do. But everyone's got their own situations. You know, the others might have turned up because they've got no other kind of option, whereas the others might have a, a different option and you can't really blame them for, for exploring that with what's been the uncertainty, what, what's been going on. Um, so, you know, it, it's one of them, really. They, they might not be doing it out of any any kind of 
disrespect, if you like, just sort of maybe they don't didn't see a resolution to it and thought, well, I'm not going in because you know there's no point. I'm gonna you know I'm not gonna I'm gonna get paid or I'm not gonna. So you can't really blame them. But it it, it you're right. It, when others do and they don't, it, it doesn't look great for them. But I don't think you can really blame them. But um, it, it doesn't look the best. Um, right, lots of questions coming in, and apologies for the internet. Uh, in Devon, it's for some reason it's uh, well, it's too hot. It can't cope. It's just that simple. Sorry, not as good as Cornwall internet, apparently. <laughs> Ooh, don't start that again. <laughs> uh, this is from Rob. Only five seasons from the Champions League. Uh, well, if only. Um, this is from Gary, and it's a very interesting point, Phil. You might well remember this. Um, even with Paolo Di Canio, we started very slowly and then built up game by game. Now, if you remember rightly, of course, uh, Paolo won the first game 3-0 at home uh, and uh, everything was great. And then I think lost the next six. So it was a pretty disastrous start in a way. So, you know, it just goes to prove, doesn't it, that from one moment you can turn it around and everything goes forward. Yeah, it, it, yeah. It's not how you start; it's how you finish. That's that's the most important thing. So, um, yeah, it 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 might not be the best if you lose the first six games, like you said. But then, you know, football supporters have, have very, you know, short memories and 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 impatient <laughs> impatient views sometimes. But it, it is what it is. But like you say, with, with everything that's been going, listen, you don't know what's going to happen two or three months down the line, really. Um, you know. Um, with everything that's been going on, you don't know whether there's whether the players coming in, with the embargo being lifted. You never, you know, there's all there's all things waiting to go on. You never really know where you're going to be down the line. So it's just, um, it's just got to take it, you know. Especially with, with what's COVID's taught us, you just got to take each day, each day, each week as it comes, because you never know what's happening around the corner. You enjoy it while enjoy life while it's good. Enjoy the games while they're good. Enjoy the games while they're there. Enjoy the wins when they're there. You know, it's it, and. You, and you find out where you are at the end of the year. It's one of those things, especially with the turbulent things over the last few months, but especially with the club. But, you know, I mean, like you say, you could lose the first 10 games and still get promoted. Who, who, somebody else done it. Somebody else done it. They was, didn't Palace do it? At the... At the um, yeah, well, Bolton the, uh, is, a, is another example, isn't it? If you look at Bolton, they had a terrible start last season, didn't they? They did. They got promoted, so, yeah. Uh, right, this is um, lots coming in. Uh, this is from Chris. So I heard Grounds and Pittman's contract extensions weren't valid, and so they can't play due to insurance reasons. Uh, from Jamie N. Hello, Jamie. Uh, Sky Sports just said that the Premier League has said they cannot confirm plans or criteria for fans attending games until the government have issued guidelines to them. Assume EFL is in the same situation. So there we are. We don't know, basically, at the minute what's going on with them. That. Uh, from Martin, are the Trust and Clem going to proceed with buying the county ground 50-50, James? Are you going to do that? Um, it's certainly in the strategic plan that Clem put forward, and it's certainly, from a Trust perspective, one of the things we want to continue doing. So, yes. And, and there's no timelines for that, of course, at the moment, are there, James? It's just very much... No, I mean, we've... Yeah, exactly. I mean, we've been in constant contact with the, the council kind of updating them on on the transfer of ownership situation. So, you know, they are the council are extremely um, keen to, to restart negotiation, you know, restart the whole process as soon as um, obviously the transfer to Clem and Axis had occurred. So, yeah, I mean, I would imagine, you know, it's it's something they they want to get underway quickly. But obviously, you know, the key thing is let's start, let's get everything ready for the season, solid foundations, and then naturally, then you know, the county ground purchase will be something that I guess will be looked at fairly imminently. Then uh, this is from Ben. Time to get right. So, uh, sorry, I just wanted to ask um, James if that that means a whole load of new paperwork, presumably, does it? Because the previous paperwork has been associated with Lee Power. Uh, it, it doesn't necessarily because the way that the joint venture has been uh, legally formed is been done in such a way that it would allow for someone else. It's almost been done in, you know, the owner rather than Lee Power. Um, so ultimately we can pick up what we've got and effectively start restart that. Um, um, yes, yeah, so there'll be a couple of things that will need to be obviously done but ultimately it's been done in a way that should allow for 
for us to be pick, to be able to pick that up and move forward with it pretty quickly again. So yeah. Uh, this is from Ben. Yep. Time to get behind the new manager and the players. It's going to be tough, but this season is one of the most important in the club's history. I think that's fair to say. Uh, from Rich, who is the new manager? Well, Ben Garner is head coach, and uh, Ben Chorley is the new director of football. So that's how we stand at the minute. Uh, Phil, here we are then, uh, two and a half weeks before the start of a new campaign. It's scorching hot, typical pre-season weather as a footballer. I should imagine the last thing you want to do is run around a training pitch, but it has to be done. This is the most important part of the season, isn't it, uh, from a footballer's perspective? Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's where, you, like you say, where we alluded to earlier, is it where you get your, your style of play, your, you set your plans out, you set your stall out, you know, the manager will set his stall out where, where he sees us going, um, you know, what sort of thing we're going to do, how we're going to play, what the targets in that are. Uh, obviously, fitness, um, you know, massive part of it, getting that. But then I think, you know, it's changed since since I think generally everyone's quite fit in, in terms of what they're doing off-season. Um, not like in my day where I used to do a couple of runs the week before and, and hope for the best, you know. I, I think um, <laughs> it's, it's um, you know, you know that's how it used to be, you know, more about fitness. But I think now it's more about your, your, your tactical and, and, and your, how, you know, style of play and, and everything like that. So, yeah, that, and you don't get another chance to do anything like it again in the season where you've got that much time on the training ground uh, to get things right and to get things wrong and put them right after, it, you know, in a sort of, um, you know, uh, in an easier sort of situation. So, yeah, it is vastly important. And, yeah, it is the worst running around in 40 degree heat is the worst <laughs> thing. It's, it is awful. You can't breathe. Oh, it's terrible. Especially when you're, when you're yeah. 17 stone like me as well. It's not good. <laughs> uh, this is from Carl. Is there any news on a CEO? Well, I think the obvious answer to that, James, is watch this space tomorrow afternoon. Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. Um, there is a new CEO. Um, they've started working with with the club, and yeah, they'll be announced tomorrow. Yeah, I think Vic has uh, Vic has dropped. <laughs> He's left us again. Yeah. Do you do you know who it is James? But obviously you can't say. But do you know who they are? Uh, I, I I do, but we I can't say unfortunately. Oh, sorry. We, we're you're back, Nick. <laughs> I'm back. Hurrah! Anyway, I think what we'll do is we'll wind this up because before the internet drives me crazy. Anyway. <laughs> we'll back if we can. <laughs> the wonders of modern science, eh? It's just a brilliant thing. I I think it's just had enough, like all of us, of the heat, quite frankly. <laughs> And it, it wants to go and cool down. Um, uh, it, it works in Cornwall, Anna, because James is outside in the beautiful evening sunshine. And yeah, in here, it's like a, yeah. yeah, maybe so. So there you are, Pete. We got through a lot tonight, didn't we? With lots and lots of questions and comments. Yeah, there, there's still more coming. Um, there was just one question from uh, Graham who asked, um, when, when can people start booking travel through SAS Travel? Um, and when can we renew memberships? Um, now, notwithstanding that um, statement around Sky Sports and the Premier League, not knowing whether fan, you know, when fans can come back in and, and, and that um, situation, um, to, to get a discount on SS Travel, you actually renew your OSC membership. So that's £5 annual membership. So SS Travel will look for your member number. Um, and when you actually renew, it, there's a, a tick box um, which gives us permission to give SAS Travel your details. So when you go booking with them, they know that you're a member of the supporters club. Um, and that can be booked, so that's five pound annual um, membership. That can be booked through our website. Um, and we actually spoke with SAS Travel today um, and they're putting their plans in place. Um, so confirmed with them literally today that um, they're starting to work on, on bookings. Um, but as soon as they know and they can communicate something, it will go out through social media. Um, so, um, you know, I guess watch this space. Um, we've lost Rick again, so I guess it's a good time to wrap up. So thanks, Rick. Oh, he's coming back. Hang on, I'll bring him back on just to say goodbye. So thanks, Anna, James and Phil. Um, I'm not sure when we're going to have our next uh, um, Monday night panel. It might even be on a Monday. Um, just depends on, on <laughs> when the news flows, really. Um, but I'm, I'm guessing we'll have a, you know, at least a couple between now and, and the start of the season. So thanks once again. Um, Vic, I don't know if you have anything, closing statement you want to make? Other no, uh, just thank you very much, Steve, for all, yeah, thank you very much, Steve, for all your support. And it was lovely at Melcher, uh, not at Melcher, but Supermarine last night. 
where lots of people came up and said thank you for doing the panels because they really enjoyed them. So thank you. And, and, and because you're watching them, that's why we're doing them. It's that simple. So thank you very much. Yeah, exactly. exactly, exactly. Great. Well, thanks very much, everyone. And uh, we'll see you soon.